Hello world! As the track count in your project starts to grow, navigating the project can become a real headache and can even put you off working on it altogether. When that starts to happen, bouncing down your session into simple audio stems makes it much easier to keep moving forward and resets the load on your CPU too. In this video, I'll take you through the simple steps on how to do this in Ableton along with lots of handy tips along the way. Let's get started. One, clean up. If your tracks are all over the place after the initial frenzy of songwriting, start by taking a quick second to put them into some reasonable order. If you don't already have a system of your own, you could use something like this as a reference. Place the kick at the top, followed by the rest of the drums, and then the bass. This forms the foundation for the rest of the track to sit under. Next, instruments, then any effects, and lastly, vocals. Having the vocals at the bottom means that any instrumental songs you write will still be able to follow the same basic structure. Color-wise, I just apply the rainbow colors to this structure. So the kick at the top is in red, drums in orange, all the way down to vocals at the bottom in violet. Two, group tracks into stems. Decide which tracks you're going to merge into the same stem and place them into their own group, Command G. Be careful moving tracks out of existing groups with processing already applied on those groups. Try to leave these in their groups, unless you really know what you're doing here. If you're interested to learn a bit more about this, I have a short video on my channel explaining the common mistake that this can lead to. Once you're done grouping, tidy up by collapsing all groups, Option or Alt and U. 3. Number each group. So that your stems keep the same order when you pull them back in, rename each group to start with the number of the group. To do this quickly, just click on the first group, hit Command R to rename it, and jump straight to the next group by hitting Tab. 4. Disable Master Plugins If you're working with plugins on your master, turn these off. Again, this relates to the same concept of not stemming out tracks that are being processed as a group. We'll be re-enabling the master processing again in the Stemmed Out project. Select all the master plugins and hit zero on the keyboard to disable them all in one go. 5. Set the start and end time. Stretch the loop brace out to line up with the start and end time of your song. By then clicking on the loop brace before bringing up the export menu, Ableton will automatically use these to fill in the start and end times for the export. 6. Export. Select all the groups and bring up the export menu, Command, Shift and R. Change rendered tracks from master to selected tracks only so that each of the groups we just selected gets exported as a separate stem. Moving on down the form, we see that the start and stop times have automatically been set to match the loop brace we selected. If you use sends, you can choose to bake these into your stems by checking Include Return and Master Effects, or turn it off to export these as additional stems. Leave all the other options off and match the export sample rate to the project sample rate. This will be the one with the speaker icon. Make sure that you have file type set to WAV, bit depth set to 32, and dither options set to no dither. And now you're all set. Go ahead and click export. At this point, Ableton asks you to name the stems. The name of each stem will be exported as this name followed by the group name. There's no option to leave this blank, so just type in something short to keep Ableton happy. Create a folder inside the project to store the stems in, name it, and click Save. You can then clean up that pesky preamble if you like by selecting all the stem files and clicking File, Rename Items on Mac. Windows users might have to manually remove this or use a tool like Bulk Rename or you could just leave it in there like a savage. 
7. Prepare the new stem session. To continue working on the project using the stems, first save your existing project and immediately save as. Then delete all the tracks. This way, you have a blank project to pull your stems right back into and you can keep all your original markers and master bus, which by the way, you can now re-enable. And lastly, 8. Pull in the new stems. Select all the stems and drag them over into the session. Before letting go of the mouse button, hold down Command on Mac or Control on Windows. This lets you stack the stems in parallel instead of one after the other. Notice how the stems retained their original order because we numbered the groups before exporting. From here, you can restore the original color coding to the tracks and propagate these out to the stems by selecting them all, right-clicking and selecting Assign Track Color to Clips. One final step you could carry out to make your project even more clear is to strip out the silence. Sadly, Ableton doesn't have a built-in function to do this, but we can use a neat trick described by the legendary Mr. Bill to make this process easier. Simply select all the clips and then turn one of the clips gain faders up to max. Now you can go through stripping out silence without accidentally cutting out quieter sounds that might have been too small to see. If you have Ableton set to automatically create fades on clip edges, just be careful not to fade any transients at the start of any of your clips. Once you're done stripping out silence, simply select all the clips again and reset the volumes by double-clicking on the clip volume. And there you have it. If later down the line you decide that you need the full group of one of the stems, it's as simple as going to the previously saved project in the browser and dragging it straight in. So you still have that flexibility if you need it. I've put together a concise one-page cheat sheet with these steps, which you can quickly refer to at any time whenever you're exporting stems. There's a link in the description below. Click.